All right, so get this. We're diving into a world with orcs and necromancers and a legendary sword yeah. that's giving off some serious Game of Thrones vibes. You know, right. That kind of story that makes you want to grab a giant turkey leg and settle in. Absolutely. Well, your excerpt did not disappoint. No, it did not. What I find so fascinating about this is how it just throws us right into the thick of it. We experienced this world through the eyes of an orc warrior named Snortak. Okay. No warm-up, no world-building exposition or anything like that. We're immediately in his head experiencing his world as he does. Exactly. And let me tell you, Snortak's world is uh, not for the faint of heart. No. This is an orc shaped by centuries of, well, we'll just call it tough love, <laughs> thanks to his master, the necromancer, Rotsoil. Yeah. His life is all about brute force and following orders mm -hmm. and probably not a lot of warm, fuzzy feelings. Yeah, no, not a lot of uh, knitting circles in this one. Right. And I think that's what makes this whole thing so intriguing. So Snortek gets sent on a mission to recover this legendary sword. The orcs, they call it Gut Render, but you might know it by its human name. Life Drinker. Okay, Life Drinker. Yeah, it sounds a lot scarier. <laughs> right. Life Drinker. Like, honestly, even just the names of these things. Yeah. It's serious business when you can't even say the name of the thing without being afraid, right? Exactly. It, it makes you think about the power that we give to words and labels. It really does. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And Rotsoil believes that this sore, this Life Drinker, is the key to finally conquering the human kingdom of Galumin. Oh, boy. We're talking, like, potential bloodbath. Yeah. Thousands enslaved or worse. The stakes are very high. Stakes are very high. But here's where things take a turn. Snortak, who you got to understand, is basically the orc equivalent of that one friend who never returns their library books. Right. Like, ever. Yeah. Starts showing moments of kindness. Like, actual unexpected kindness. Yeah. It's uh, it's subtle at first. It's yeah. almost like the writer is dropping these little hints along the way that this isn't just a straightforward bad guy on a mission type of story. Something else is happening here. Something's happening within Snortak. Interesting. And it makes you question everything you thought you knew about orcs. I like it. And it all kind of starts with Snortak taking a prisoner, a human archer named Memvir. Memvir. Yeah. Imagine being captured by an orc. I know. You'd be preparing for the worst. Yeah, it's not looking good. No. Except Memvir's got a little bit of an ace up his sleeve. Okay. He claims to know Life Drinker's location. What? He says of all places, it's at his second cousin's wife's family farm. Okay, now that's just good storytelling. You've got this legendary dragon-slaying sword. Right. And it ends up as a family heirloom on some random farm. <laughs> no, all right. What are the chances? It's almost comical. Yeah. But it gets better. Memvir, being the clever guy that he is, decides to use this information to strike a deal. He's like, hey, you want that sword? Let me live and I'll lead you straight to it. Okay, that's a... Bold move. It is a bold move. Yeah. Yeah, so what does Snortak do? Does he crush Memvir like a bug? Or does he actually consider this? Mm, right. And this is where we start to see that shift in Snortak. Okay. He doesn't kill him. Wow. In fact, he does something completely unexpected. He actually listens to him. Really? Remember, this is an orc we're talking about. This is an orc who is raised on violence and blind obedience. And yet here he is entertaining the idea of sparing a human's life and making a deal. It makes you wonder what's going on in his head. Is it just the prospect of finding this legendary sword that he's heard so much about, or is there something more there? Right, well, their journey to the farm, I think is where things get really interesting. Go ahead. The excerpt describes Weirwood Forest as this place that's just teeming with danger. Mm -hmm. Ancient magic, all sorts of things that go bump in the night. It's almost symbolic, isn't it? Oh, I like that. This journey through a dark and unknown forest mirroring Snortak's own internal exploration. I like that a lot. So it's not just a physical journey, it's emotional. It's psychological. Are precisely. And amid all of these close calls with like terrifying creatures. Yeah. I mean, there's even a scene with this ancient spider hunter, Marperts. It's like straight out of a nightmare. Oh, no. Snortak is experiencing things he never has before. The excerpt talks about him noticing the beauty of a sunset for the first time. Oh, wow. Sharing a meal with Memvir and actually savoring the taste of the food. That's interesting. Just these little things that we might take for granted. Right. They're completely foreign to him. Yeah. It's like he's seeing the world in color for the first time after a lifetime of black and white. Oh, wow. You know, that reminds me of that quote. The real voyage of discovery consists not in seeking new landscapes, but in having new eyes. And it makes me think about like all those times in my own life when I've encountered something that 
just completely challenged my preconceived notions and shifted my perspective. Right, and that's the beauty of great storytelling. Yes. It allows us to connect with these characters on a human level, even when those characters happen to be orcs. Right. And as Snortek is experiencing these new things, these glimmers of beauty and connection, we see that internal struggle intensifying. Yeah. He's still torn yeah. between this brutal warrior he was raised to be and this new, more nuanced way of seeing the world. So it's like nature versus nurture, but orc style. Exactly. Yeah, and the stakes just keep rising because they're getting closer and closer to the farm, mm -hmm. closer and closer to Life Drinker. So what will win out? Snortax or Sish upbringing or mm -hmm. this newfound sense of, I don't know, something else. Something else, yeah. So he left off with Snortax. He's got his internal battle raging on it, right? And just when you think things can't get more complicated, another player enters the scene. Oh, yeah. We almost forgot about while Snortek and Memver are trekking through Weirwood Forest, there's a human lord named Defaris, and he's busy connecting the dots. Okay. He's heard the whispers about this power-hungry necromancer amassing power, and he suspects that Life Drinker is involved. And he just figures this out. Well, let's just say Lord Defaris is a bit like that friend who always wins at Clue. Yep. He's sharp, resourceful, and he knows how dire the situation is. Okay. The excerpt even describes him looking at a map. And he's tracing his fingers along the edges of Weirwood Forest. Yeah. And he says something like, If I were a legendary sword hiding from a necromancer, Klofsker's farm would be the perfect place. Okay, so maybe he doesn't say it exactly like that. Right. But you get the idea. You get the idea. So you've got Snortek and Memvir approaching from one direction, and Lord of Forest and his forces closing in from another. Oh yeah, this is... Talk about a recipe for disaster. It's all coming to a head. And Snortak is still dealing with his own stuff on top of all I, this. Oh, absolutely. He's completely torn. This internal conflict is just eating away at him. Yeah. The loyalty to rot soil, the promise of power that comes with Life Drinker. Right. But also this newfound sense of empathy and connection he's developed with Memvir. Right. It all comes to a head in a really powerful scene at the farm. Okay, what happens? So Snortak, he sees Memvir with his family. And the excerpt describes this really simple moment. You know, Memvir's cousin hands him a cup of something warm to drink. Okay. And the look on Memvir's face is just pure contentment. Wow. And Snortak sees this. Yeah. And something in him just breaks. Right. He realizes that the life that Rot Soil offers, this life of conquest and domination, right. it's never going to bring him this kind of peace. It's a different kind of power. It really is. Yeah. It's recognizing that maybe there's something more important than power and might. Right. It's those simple acts of kindness and connection. Exactly. And he chooses that even if it means betraying everything he's ever known. Exactly. But of course, there's a twist. There's always a twist. Snortek knows that he can't stay at the farm. The forest and his men are closing in. And an orc, even one who seemingly had a change of heart, would put everyone at risk. Oh, no. So he makes a difficult choice. He steals Life Drinker, leaving Memvir and his family unharmed, but utterly bewildered. Oh, wow. So he chooses a different path, but it's still shrouded in mystery. Right. It's a complete cliffhanger. It is a total cliffhanger. We don't know what he's going to do next. What he's going to do with his sword. Right. Start a cooking show. Snortax sizzling swords and skewers. I'd watch that. I would watch that show. Right. Sign me up. But... In all seriousness, that's what I love about this ending. It sparks all these questions. Will he disappear? Will he try to use this sword to fight against rot soil? Or could there be a third option? Could he be seeking a way to bridge the divide between orcs and humans? Right. Could this be the start of something bigger? We don't know. And that's the beauty of it. It makes you think. That's the mark of great storytelling. Exactly. It sends you off on your own mental adventure long after you've finished reading. It's like you've finished a meal, mm -hmm. but you can still taste all the flavors. Well, that wraps up this deep dive into the world of orcs, necromancers, and legendary swords. You can find all the details about the source material on our website. And big thanks to you, our listeners, for joining us. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep those deep dives going.